so I got to those judges and they said, you're in the finale, you're in the top three, uh, this is the last episode that I actually stopped and thought, this is it. You're going to cook an entree. How hard can it be? But not just one entree. Together, you guys need to cook over a hundred entrees. Recently, I saw Grant King come in and he did a, a potato and squid ink fondant. And I looked at the two vegetables, the, the cauliflower and the, and the potatoes, and I thought they're, they're pretty similar. What it's going to be? Yeah. Smear, tuna on the diagonal there, confit on top, three pieces of apple. And I knew that if I could get the right flavours around it, then it would really stand out of the plate. The challenge is you go, that cauliflower and squid will eat your right, isn't going to work. Yet it does. If you've never eaten a fisherman's basket or a seafood basket, you're probably not Australian. These guys are actually breaking the 500 soon. I'll go to get a 10. Getting a 10 from Gary is, for him to say that dish was a 10 out of 10, that's got to go down as, as my, my best and most successful dish. I got him to sign it, <laughs> and it's probably going to get framed and put in my living room because that was pretty special. Oh, okay. My proudest moment on the show was definitely the... Uh, it's a combination of a few things. I love being in the Stanley Pub um, in Tasmania where we were thrown into the deep end. We were thrown into the fire. That was one of the hardest challenges I've ever done to date. I need five crates, five feet, and I need them down. Yes, George. Yeah. I don't know why, but it's actually fun. George, George Yano did a suggested food on the plate so I was going to it. Italy has to be up there. Um, I mean, I would never would have thought in my wildest dreams I'd be travelling to Italy with a cooking show. Ta-da! <laughs> Another favourite dish of mine was the, the beef episode in the in finals week. Uh, John Giroud, we didn't see eye to eye the whole time. He didn't understand my way of cooking. So, it was a bit of a hairy moment there. He had no idea what I was talking about. He said, I can't see this working. And then I took my dish up and he absolutely loved it. He raved about it. That is brilliant. Thank you very much. Absolutely brilliant. He doesn't give that praise very often. He's a pretty hard taskmaster, so to hear that from him, um, yeah, it was, I'll, I'll never forget that. The gay time goes nuts. Well, I've learned that I can't just be a, a savoury chef. I have to, I have to be able to cook sweets, especially to impress any type of female, because they love them. <laughs> the rook! <laughs> <laughs> I knew Julia would do a great job. It didn't really faze me that it was a dessert. I've, I've conquered so many things before that I haven't cooked previously. Everything has had an element on it that I haven't used or I haven't cooked before. But I knew if I had that recipe there, there was no way that it, anything could stop me from putting up a good dish. Come on, come on, give it a go. Good well on, Rob. Go to that one. Right up until that last five minutes before the judges revealed the last scores, um, I was a laid back, relaxed guy, um, didn't take the competition too seriously, but standing there for that last five minutes was the longest five minutes of my life. My heart was going a thousand miles an hour. I gave you an eight. You are Australia's master chef for 2012. I feel like I've, I've achieved something that I never would have dreamed of doing. Um, and that makes it really, really special. You know, I want to learn so much and pushing myself to see how far I can actually go with cooking. It's, it'll definitely be my profession for the, for the